Got my good friend Tim here. What's up guys? And uh, Tim is gonna be talking about something that uh, isn't really spoken about lately because it's something that people don't want to talk about too much and that is the negative side of starting a startup. Because <laughs> right now a lot of people are in the honeymoon stage. They want to do a startup that is a tech or fintech or whatever different type of genre you're in and they dream about becoming the next unicorn billion dollar company. Listen, those are unicorns. In fact, it's not even a one percenter that you become one of those. You're probably like at looking at 0.001% of a chance becoming that. And historically speaking, if you look at all these successful unicorns, there's much more to that than meets the eye. So Tim, why don't you do the honors and introduce yourself. What's up guys, I'm Tim. I recently started a startup probably around six months ago. Food business, bone broth. If you're not familiar with bone broth, take bones, simmer in water, takes all the nutrients out of the bones and it's a nice, healthy, delicious, savory soup. Pretty big in the health industry right now, so that's where we're aiming at. And yeah, I'm running that for the last six months and you know, you're running into some bumps and bruises along the way and you know, expected, but also pretty damn frustrating. <laughs> so what's something that uh, was unexpected of a challenge that you had? Basically working with a food manufacturer or a co-packer um, might be one of the most frustrating things. Uh, they're big companies, they don't give a shit about the small guy coming in. Uh, my minimum orders are, you know, peanuts to what they're going about doing with big companies and working with them is like fucking watching, you know, paint on a wall dry, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean just trying to get going with them, trying to do all the sourcing of ingredients, trying to get pricing, you know, it's uh, trying to find the right co-packer who actually does the product that I'm doing. I mean, their facility needs to be set up specifically for the product that I'm doing and you know, you, you might find one out of every 50 co-packers who do it. So what would you say is one skill that you quickly picked up through this process, this challenge that you have in front of you? The one skill I would say is to keep knocking on the door every single day because no one's coming to you to produce this product. Um, and you, you better be you know that, that annoying little brother who keeps calling every supplier, he keeps calling every co-packer and says, where's my pricing, where's my pricing, when are we starting, when are we starting? And without that, I mean, we're not moving forward. And the, you know, the biggest, biggest really uh, asset you have in a startup is time and the slower you go, the more you're just gonna get choked out, and you're gonna you're gonna lose, you're gonna die. And so, speed is is very important at an early stage of a startup. And you know, when these people were you know working slower slower than anyone, and I'm I'm in such a rush, like, the only thing I could do is you know keep calling them, keep calling them, try so to you, make. You would say follow up's a big thing. Follow up's a big thing, and not and not just you know not following up and just saying like and giving these like creating a good relationship with with everyone you speak to and and making them you know making them know that you respect their side as well because you know it's all about relationships at the end of the day if you if they if they know that you're respecting them from a from a genuine place then they're gonna want to do the work for you, you yeah know? and yeah I mean it's just keep keep going and, and so what about team building have you seen any challenges in that yeah absolutely I mean yeah I mean starting a startup is uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like what, what, what advice would you have for somebody right now who is thinking of starting, starting a startup or is in the midst of building mm -hmm. a startup? Yeah, I mean, you're, well, your partner is going to be important, and whoever you're working with in the startup, especially in the mid in the early stages, you know, it's it's tough to find the right fit and the right person to be working with. You know, you're, it's uh, you've probably heard this before, but finding the right partner is like finding a spouse, or you know, it's like a marriage. And you're not gonna find your marriage partner, your your, your spouse, like in overnight. I've had a lot of divorces in my life. But yeah. <laughs> if we're gonna relate that towards partnerships, yeah. So as Tim said, it's really tough. But uh, I would say, you know, in my my experience and working with like top level entrepreneurs and businesses around the world, 
the key is not actual finances or getting funding or even having the best marketing. The key is having that dream team around you, having that unity, that family, that chemistry, that everybody knows where they're going. And mm -hmm. as Cameron Harold talks about, you're having your painted picture or, or that vivid vision of, hey guys, this is a light at the end of the tunnel. This is that, our mural, our, our, our imagination, our, our vision where we wanna go and everybody's thriving to go towards that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it takes time. There's exercise they can do out there. Steven Sisler is a great resource to check out. He has disc profiling, or you can do like Kobe profiling and see how people are hardwired, you know? And for example, my case, I'm a go-go type of person. I don't I don't like slow pokes. I don't like people who procrastinate. I don't like fucking people who just make fucking excuses up. Get the job done. That's it, end of story, right? So there's clashes, however, there's, there is a disadvantage to me. I'm not the most detailed oriented person, right? Mm -hmm. However, what happens if you mix somebody like me with say somebody who's very detailed oriented? Mm -hmm. You get in the yin and the yang, right? right? So finding that team chemistry, I'd put my emphasis on that beyond anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good point. So let's talk about funding though. Like, uh, yeah. what do you say on that? So, you know, Rave's about close to 70,000. Uh, some government funding, some, you know, private funding, but yeah, I mean, with a food business, it's it's pretty capital intensive. As I'm, you know, slowly beginning to realize, like, you know, if you want to grow quick, you're gonna. And it's almost like any business. If you want to grow quick, you need more funding. But uh, especially with the food business, if you want to get into retail quick, if you want to, you know, go into big big chains like Loblaws, uh, go into the states, they have big listing fees. Um, these stores don't pay you for 60 to 90 days after you get into the store, so yeah. your cash flow is really. It's really running out quick. So 70K, it's like, you know, I'm getting started. I'm just, and that's going quick. And I'm not paying myself, I'm not paying anyone. I'm just really production. So it's, you know, it's, uh, you need money. Yeah, you need money to, to start a food business, especially, you know, in the product, I, 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 product world. I, I would say, I think the food business is probably the most competitive and the most mm -hmm. cash intensive startup of all startups, not to mention the legalities behind it. Right, yeah. Because right? you're dealing with food, the regulations to be yeah. on the shelf. Yeah, definitely. So what would you, what like final thoughts do you have for somebody thinking of starting any startup, regardless if it's food, clothing, tech, fintech? Well, first I think I would just say, you know, I would say you would, you need to have some fucking balls. The Stugax, you need you, the man you, balls. You better love. Let, let, let's be let's be politically yeah. correct for a second. Right? Yeah. You, yeah, not man balls. You just need the balls. Yeah, I mean, be, be comfortable with like being put down and be comfortable with being the small guy and you know being that little you know not really not being being okay with a lot of little losses <laughs> because it's gonna happen it's gonna be frustrating you know and if you can't get over those it's you know you're gonna die quick and it's a big mental game so be prepared for that I mean that's a but that's a very stoic philosophy yeah so yeah. it's stoicism it's a great exercise they do is to future project yourself in a what-if scenario mm -hmm. And that's what we do in planning too, whether you're raising for your business or whether you're planning any, even a marketing campaign is like, you wanna plan for the best and prepare for the worst. Right, yeah. So always expect the fact that shit will go <laughs> down, like wrong, Yeah. and be ready for that. The worst is a reaction. You always wanna respond instead of react. Yeah. And yeah. if you can put yourself in a mindset, forget like the actual, oh, do I have money, do I have resources, but right. the mindset. Right. If your mind is there for the fact of saying, I'm responding instead of reacting, you've won period mm -hmm. yeah and I mean I gotta thank you for that a lot of the time because I've, I've come to you a number of times I've been like man I'm fucked and you're just like why I'm like well I can't I don't have enough money for this and like you're like okay so then what and I'm like well then then this and like okay so then what and I'm like okay and then well he's like so what's the solution and I'm like okay and we work out a solution and that's that I mean it's like it's literally yeah, that simple yeah it's yeah I mean it is it's really like do you want to let those things kill you or do you want to continue you know and you know thankfully I have a guy like Amir who's just like you are making these problems up basically we, <laughs> all, we, we always self-sabotage though yeah we do <laughs> right? yeah there's not a pro there's no problem there so we figure out ways to make problems for ourselves it's like human nature for some oh yeah but anyways Tim uh, where can people actually find information about your new startup uh, so our website's broyaliving.com b-r-o-y-a living.com you could order product there too and we're ready to go and uh, you know formalizing the recipes and making it taste as good as possible right now and we'll be in a bunch of shows coming up 
Uh, there's the yoga show, the total health show. But uh, yeah, check out the website. Send me an email, tim at broyliving.com. Check out us on Twitter, Facebook, anything, and I'll get back to you. I'll tell you a little bit more about broth if you're interested. Cool. Peace. Later.